Halloween's in the rearview mirror. That means it's time to start thinking about the Christmas lights for 2019. And no power, no lights. So uh, let's build a couple of outdoor safe, properly wired power supply cabinets. You can buy pre-made mounting plates for the CG1500 weatherproof enclosures I'm using relatively cheaply. That's because all they are is a nine and a half inch square piece of plastic. I decided to make my own out of some quarter inch plywood I had laying around using the table saw and the belt sander to round over the edges because who wants splinters for Christmas? With the boards prepped, it's time to start laying out for the stuff that's gonna get mounted to them. And I'm gonna start with the biggest thing, which is the power supply. A lot of holes on the bottom of this thing, but there are nuts embedded in it in actually five places, the four corners and one off center in the middle here. Uh, I'm gonna use just the four corners, which is a rectangle and would be easy enough to measure and lay out, but a template is gonna work even better. I'm gonna line up one corner of the paper with power supply and tape it down. Give it a rough trim just so it's easier to work with. And rather than marking these holes, I'm going to feel for them with the pencil and actually punch them. I can pull the template off the power supply and go straight to my board. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put the fuse block on here. Mark those holes too. A drill press is not an absolute requirement for this step, but it sure is handy because these holes need to be straight. If your screws come through the board crooked, they're gonna go into the threads of what you're mounting crooked. And that's a recipe for cross threading in either aluminum or plastic, neither of which is a great plan. With all the holes drilled, it can start mounting stuff on the board. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but having little standoffs like this beneath the power supply will do two things for you. It'll get you better airflow underneath here so that the cooling is better. And the other problem it solves is that these holes, some of them are real, real super shallow. You, whatever you thread in there is not gonna be the right length to go through this wood and into here. So the standoffs are easy to cut the threads. Take one of the nuts, and I know this is impossible to see because they're black. Thread it on there to where you want the threads to be, and then just nip the plastic off. The threads cut pretty cleanly because they're soft plastic, but the nut fixes whatever went wrong with them. I've been known to put just the tiniest drop of super glue in mine. Once all the standoffs are on there and dried, you can flip your mounting board over, pop in the screws. The board mounts inside the box with four screws in the corners. There are plastic standoffs in the back of the box, so the board is not sitting flat against the back. That leaves room for mounting screws for other hardware to poke through the board. Nothing fancy for the fuse block. It just gets number eight screws using what we drilled for pilot holes. Wiring time, so I've moved to the electronics bench up in the ham shack slash office. This is 16 gauge low voltage landscape wiring, which works pretty well for this kind of an application. But there is fairly high current involved, so I'm gonna run two strands from the power supply to the fuse block for both positive and negative. The ends of each strand get stripped, tinned, and then have a spade lug crimped on. I have this 90 degree angle baked in here already at this point because there's not a lot of clearance on the end of the power supply. I also need a much, much better crimp tool. This thing is awful. Anyway, once the lugs are crimped, I go back and re-solder. It takes a lot of heat to get solder to flow nicely on something big like a spade lug, so use a big tip and turn the iron up. After covering those connections with heat shrink tubing, I can install the wires in the box. These are for the negative side so that I can cut them to an exact length. The ends get twisted together, soldered so that the connection is tinned, and on this end, I'm using a ring terminal. I could have used a ring terminal on the power supply end, but I didn't have any the right size. This end also gets re-soldered, and with this much metal, it might have been time to break out the butane-powered soldering iron, but with a little patience, the electric job gets it done. This particular heat shrink tubing is lined with hot glue. Completely and totally unnecessary for this project, but there's no downside to using it, except that it's impossible to get off if you make a mistake. There's a lock washer on these posts, so you have to use enough torque when you tighten it to compress that lock washer, but not so much that you rip the threaded post out of the plastic base. The process is exactly the same for the jumpers on the positive side. These 90 degree bends are a lot easier to put in that glue lined tubing while it's still hot. And then once the glue sets, it kind of holds its shape. I want these jumpers to be short enough that they're neat, but I also want them long enough that they don't touch the case of the power supply anywhere. 
It shouldn't move around. It shouldn't cause any rub marks. But the case of the power supply is grounded. So if the positive lead ends up with the bare spot somewhere, that becomes a short. The heat shrink does provide some additional protection against those kinds of rub marks, but for the most part, it's just red and black color coding to keep dummies like me from hooking stuff up to the wrong terminals. The AC mains power is fed into the box using an outdoor rated heavy duty extension cord that I cut the outlet end off of. You have to be real careful knife stripping the insulation off the outside of this because you don't want to nick the wires in the middle. More spade terminals for the connections, only this time I left the blue plastic insulating sleeves on the terminals. I'm not going to put heat shrink on these things because I don't want them to be marked red and black. I don't want anybody to get the idea that these are part of the 5 volt DC system. And some sort of strain relief is necessary because this cord is going to be running across the yard, it could get tripped over, stepped on, who knows what. With the wiring done, it's time to power this thing up and then set the voltage. They ship from the factory, generally set undervolted. I've had a couple of them be way overvolt, so definitely check it and set it before you plug anything important in. And while I'm here, we'll make sure both fuses are good. Lots of options for mounting these boxes. I'm going to use the hose clamp punch outs on the back. The only thing that's really critical is that when the box is installed, that it is vertical with the entrance and exit for all the cabling on the bottom. That's the only way that the thing is fully weather resistant. Once these boxes are done, they deploy pretty quickly. You'll spend most of your time untangling the power cord and taking up the slack in those hose clamps. Well, one down, three to go. I think I'm going to step up to one inch PVC pipe to hold this thing. The half inch is more than enough to deal with uh, the weight and the wind and everything, but it doesn't drive into the ground straight. I ended up with a tilt when I let go of this thing. Good enough for now. I'm going to put its friends around where they go, and then we'll be ready for props. But that's next time, YouTube, so stick around.